of, of the part. Uh, in the two images here, uh, you can see the internal stress that is created in the, in the molding process. The image on the left is, is obviously a protractor. It's fresh out of the pack. Uh, so the, the, colors, the colors in this image represent the uh, stresses as the protractor was produced. Uh, the image on the right is actually a dog bone that we would use for uh, tensile testing. It's injection molded, and with the colors you can actually see the, the flow, uh, the stresses created by the flow as it was molded. And that brings us to SEM, our, our scanning electron microscopy. Uh, the SEM is an electron microscope that, that uses a high energy beam uh, of electrons to scan the surface of your sample. Uh, the electrons then giving off of the sample surface are used to form an image. Uh, one of the, the strengths that the SEM has over optical microscopy is its large depth of field. Uh, depth of field is basically how much of the image uh, in the z-axis that you can have in focus at, at one time. And to the right here, this is an image of a mosquito's back at 1,462x. Uh, so if you ever wondered what a mosquito's back looks like, uh, this is it. Uh, but it is a pretty good example of, of the depth of field in, a, in an SEM. Uh, you would need multiple optical images stacked together to duplicate this image. And this is just about as high of a magnification that's, that's possible with an optical scope, which really just to start with an SEM. Uh, theoretically, with a light microscope, uh, 1500X is about as high as you can go. And uh, with an F SEM, you can routinely image over a, a million X. Uh, one of the possible cons or, or downsides uh, depending on 